We continue our discussion of the chemistry of plaster and heritage building in part two with the discussion of binders. Now, binders are uh, fine mineral particles that, as the name suggests, provide strength. They actually bind the other materials like aggregates and fibers. Um, and really, binders have the most influence on how a plaster will perform what its strength will be, what its permeability will be. And for that reason, most plasters are named after their binders. For example, a clay plaster or a natural hydraulic lime plaster are examples of that. So, um, there are only really five different types of binders that were used to make plasters up until modern times. We'll begin to list those and discuss each one briefly. I'm going to um, introduce them, perhaps in the way that they were first discovered in history. The original binder, you could say, is clay. Clay is a um, hydrous aluminum sulfate, um, silicate, and uh, we'll get a bit more into its chemistry in a detailed video focused on clay alone. But um, clay has the characteristic of of not needing to be fired. So basically you can collect clay, um, use it as a plaster um, directly as it's found in nature. The next plaster that was perhaps discovered is gypsum. The reason why we feel that gypsum was discovered um, as a plaster next is because it has a very low cooking temperature. So perhaps gypsum rocks were found, used around a fire, as any rock would have been to kind of concentrate the heat. But at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, gypsum begins to calcine. It begins to lose a percentage of its water. And at that point, if water were thrown on the fire to quench it, that gypsum will fall to powder. Excess water will actually create a putty that will, um, will, um, will harden. And um, no doubt, when man first discovered that, he found that those rocks might be pretty useful. Lime, perhaps, was the next um, mineral discovered that would be useful as a binder. Similar to gypsum, um, perhaps found in the, in, during the fire-making activity. Uh, much higher temperature, though, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit but similar, um, similar type of cycle, and we'll cover these uh, gypsum and lime cycles in subsequent videos. Then we have NHL, which stands for Natural Hydraulic Lime, and Natural Hydraulic Lime is basically made from a limestone that has a very, very specific contamination or infiltration of what they call amorphous silica, and the properties that it gives to natural hydraulic lime is that it creates a slow, cementitious reaction that will actually allow the natural hydraulics limes to set underwater. Similar to natural hydraulic lime is another limestone that has some contamination, but the contamination is from a clay that has amorphous silica and also illuminates. So when both of these or when this clay marl is cooked, and both of these components of the natural limestone and the, the clay um, contamination are cooked together at a high temperature, perhaps around 1800 degrees, a clinker is formed. And as opposed to the slow natural reaction of uh, forming a cementitious gel with natural hydraulic lime, natural cement is rather rapid and sometimes can form uh, a solid mass within 10 minutes. Similar to these two, the, um, and really a subset of lime, is what we would call pozzolanic or Roman cement. We know the Romans um, had discovered and used both natural hydraulic lime and natural cement, but they were, had many pozzolanic um, mines available to them. So that a pozzolanic material is a material that you can add to lime and it creates, depending on the pozzolan, can create effect something like natural hydraulic lime or natural cement. 
and uh, that's why the Romans were such great builders. They were able to create what they called Roman cement. If you think of the, um, the Pantheon, the great dome there, which is the uh, natural, still the largest unreinforced um, natural um, dome in existence. And of course, um, many of their stuccos also um, were, were made with a pozzolanic lines.